And I'm now handing over to Nathan, who is going to uh, talk about the bar prizes for the best papers. Thank you, Richard. Um, <clears throat> I need to say as well, thanks, thanks very much to Barfra and to the trustee for giving us the opportunity to, um, to do the, the work with the, the journal. Um, I, I must say um, that at first, um, <laughs> I, I was a bit apprehensive about taking on that role, but I have enjoyed it thoroughly. And I'm very grateful for the support that ha I have received. And Alan, and Alan would say the same thing. We're very grateful for the re support we have received from, from, from BAFA and from the trustee. And in particular, we would like to thank the associate editors and the editors and the editorial board members and reviewers who have helped us to, to raise the standard and to achieve a, a level of quality um, such that the, um, the journal is currently at a level that we're very proud of. So we're very grateful to have had this opportunity. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, the, I'm now here to mention the, the uh, prices for the best paper. Uh, we, every year we select a best paper in accounting and the best paper in finance. Uh, just a bit on the, on the procedure that we adopt, we've, what we do is we send a list of all the papers that were published in a particular year, in this case, 2020. We passed on these papers to the editorial board members and the associate, associate editors, and they come back with uh, their preference for which paper um, they consider to be the best um, according to the class that they are in. Um, we as editors do not intervene in the scoring that we get. We accept them as given, and all we do, we just rank the scores and we identify the best paper according to the votes that we received. In this context, we have uh, a prize for accounting, the best accounting paper, and we also have a prize for the, finance, the best finance paper according to the votes. Uh, this year, we, we share the finance prize with two papers because uh, the, the, the scores came up with a tie. And, and in this regard, the best paper for accounting is a paper on materiality in an integrated reporting setting insights using an institutional logic framework. And that's by Danielle Sibon and Warren Maron. I don't know which, whether or not any of, of the authors for that paper is here so that we could just see you for a bit. Okay, the next prizes are for the best paper in finance. As I said before, that is shared by two papers. Um, the first, well, not in any particular order, the, the uh, one paper is do corporate press releases drive media coverage? And that is, that paper is by Silionis and Stathopoulos and Martin Walker. And the other, prize, the other prize goes to another finance paper, which is Competition and Stability in the Credit Industry. And that's by Degli uh, Innocenti, Fraudalisti, and Trigu Goro. Sorry if I mispronounce this, but this is the prize for the uh, next paper um, in finance. For the first paper, is there anyone here that we could just briefly see you? The paper by the corporate press releases drive media coverage. Is there anyone here who is an author to that paper? Yes, I'm, I'm the author, Nathan. Could Thanks we, very could much. We, could we just I'm, see you for a bit? Okay. I'm Nikos Tsileponis. Uh -huh. Nikos. Sorry, I gave you a hard time with my surname. It's a long Greek <laughs> surname. <laughs> Okay, thank well, you. well, it's nice to see you. Well done. Thanks so much for this award. Yeah. We, uh -huh. I'd like to express my gratitude to the editorial board and the associate editors for giving us uh, this award. It means a lot. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well done. And for the second paper, Competition and Stability, is there anyone connected with this paper? Yes. Here today? This is me, Marta De Innocenti. So uh, I'm very pleased to have received this prize. So I would like to thank the editorial board and the associate editors on behalf of my co-authors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Um, 
Thanks a lot, everyone. And again, I'd like to express our, our thanks to everyone who's helped us in, in, in bringing the, in, in, in achieving that level of regard and recognition in relation to the British Accounting Review. Thank you very much. Right, thank you, thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll now, I think very much, that's very, very nice recognition and also that some of the authors were able to make it uh, for today. Um, so I will now move straight away because we are not, uh, not too bad. I mean, we're just late by about five minutes. So we'll now move on to the final bit, which is uh, the uh, British Accounting and Finance Association annual awards, uh, namely for our different awards uh, for 2020. Um, we have the, um, sorry, I'm having a bit of a, going to check my, my text properly. Um, so we have Distribu Distinguished Contribution Award, the Outstanding Contribution to Accounting and Finance Education Award, the Lifetime Achievement Award, and the Distinguished Academic Award. So every year, nominations are received uh, uh, from the membership in terms of these different awards, and then uh, uh, separate panels meet uh, uh, to decide on the, on the uh, various nominations and make a determination. So uh, as, as with previous years, we've received a number of nominations and we very much thank uh, the membership for, for making, putting forward those nominations. I think, like I said last uh, October, when we did the 2019 ones, it's, it's often a lot of efforts, a lot of contributions and a lot of, 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 uh, of uh, really help and support from, from many academics that we try to recognize through these awards in different ways. So, um, um, so we're glad to be able to make those, those awards uh, uh, this year. So I will, I will now, uh, we'll now move on with uh, each of these individual awards. Uh, so I will start with the Distinguished Contribution Award, uh, which is, um, I'm going now to try to find our, 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 our award is, Richard is going to make the introduction. Richard McVeigh, are you here? Yes. Right, yeah. so I will spotlight you, as well as obviously the awardee, Gillian. I think, uh, I think Gillian is here, isn't she? Yeah. So. Yes, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, good, Gillian. good. Okay, so please go ahead, Richard. Well, it's my great pleasure to have this opportunity to uh, say a few words in honour of Gillian Knight. Yeah, uh, turn it off. Yeah, um, Sarah, I'm turn it off. Thank you. Yep. Good. Uh, yeah. So my great honour to um, to say a few words uh, about Gillian, a research manager at ICAW, uh, who is getting the distinguished contribution award. I've known Gillian <laughs> since we started work together at ICAW, of which I'm a former council member. From uh, 1994, I became the Institute's part-time academic advisor. First while I was a professor at Aberystwyth and then continuing uh, when I was at LSE. And Gillian became the research manager in 2001. And from then until I retired as academic advisor uh, in December, 2013, we worked closely together, usually over breakfast meetings at Chartered Accountants Hall in the city of London, where Gillian organized a welcome supply of pain au chocolat. Our main focus was on sifting research applications and choosing referees in preparation for research advisory board decisions. But we were also proactive in searching for potential researchers for strategic areas and in helping applicants shape their proposals to demonstrate their relevance to current ICAW priorities and thereby improve their chances of getting funding. The board has always encouraged funded researchers 
to pursue publication in leading academic journals as a first priority, as well as supporting the publication of research report monographs where appropriate. And Gillian helped to oversee the successful completion of this process, not least in diplomatically chasing overdue research, <laughs> the bane of her life. I won't repeat what she said about some of them. 2005 saw the launch by ICAW of the annual Information for Better Markets conferences designed to bring together leading academic and practitioner contributions together with related debate. The subsequent publication of the papers alongside the annual PD League lectures has been in a special edition of accounting and business research each year. They provide an invaluable resource, especially for new researchers wanting to know the state of the art in their area. And Gillian has always been central to the promotion and execution of these initiatives, which are of course ongoing. Gillian's relationship with the UK academic community has always been excellent, and especially during the difficult period after the 2008 financial crisis, when the trustees who manage the charitable research funds had to cut back and in several cases claw back planned project funding. Gillian handled this with firmness but also with enormous tact and always retain the respect of those affected. Gillian has also been involved with ICAW's sponsorship of academic conferences, including, of course, the, uh, this weekend's BAFA doctoral, ma doctoral masterclasses and extending to conferences on accounting and auditing history. <clears throat> and in recent years, the ICAW's City of London Livery Company, the worshipful company of chartered accountants in England and Wales, has supported chartered accountants wishing to move into an academic career mm. with uh, PhD bursaries. This is a strategic priority for ensuring that there's a mix of people with professional experience in the academic departments of the future. Julian has been central to the administration of the selection of candidates, and I know she's greatly enjoyed forming new relationships with ICAW members at this stage of their potential new academic career. Internationally, she also participates in the organization of the ICAW activities in the United States at the AAA, American Accounting Association annual meetings, which include showcasing a number of panel sessions featuring uh, leading US and other academics. These have now been extended to the EAA meetings and a research relationship is being developed with the Chinese Ministry of Finance and Chinese academics. So to sum up, it was Can my- Can I just say one thing, Richard? I'd just like to thank a very, very, Can very- Can you just much. wait till I've finished, Michael? And could you mute speaking. yourself, please? I will, but I was just supporting her- well, on Can FR you wait speaking. till I've finished? Chairman, firm hand, please. To sum up. Right. To sum up, it was my great privilege and pleasure to work alongside Gillian for some 13 years. And I know she's always derived great pleasure and professional satisfaction from her work supporting the academic community. She's contributed enormously to ICAW's relationship with BAFA, with CPAF, and with our members. 
and I unreservedly commend her for this distinguished contribution award. Congratulations, Gillian. Thank, thank you very much, Richard. Thank you for those kind words. And I remember those uh, pal chocolat. Um, if people can see, I actually do have the award just sitting behind me. It's a rather nice um, engraved glass plaque. Very nice. If, if I can just um, say a few words. Um, as a non-academic, I actually never imagined that I would be here collecting an award. Um, and in fact, when I was first received the email about it, I thought it was a mistake. Um, and I actually sent an email back saying, oh, I think you might have sent this to the wrong person. So I'm really overwhelmed to be getting this. Um, and I want to thank BAFA and all of the academic community. Um, there are so many things that I've learned through working with you all and that I absolutely love about working with you as a community. Um, I think there's all the intellectual stimulation, um, the fact that you're, you really are a global community and I talk to people from all over the world. And I think most importantly, you challenge conventional thinking and, and the ways of doing things. And you tell us that perceived opinions in the profession may not always be right. And that's so important. And I feel very privileged to be working with you all. I think one of the things I'm proudest of are our annual TV Leap Lecture and Information for Better Markets conferences. And both of those events try to bring together practitioners and academics because it's so important that, that you talk to each other and that we expose practitioners to academic thinking. Um, both those events have always been free of charge and will be in the future to attract as wide um, an audience as possible. Um, I am probably a little bit disappointed to be receiving this award online and therefore missing out on a slap up dinner with you all. But over the year of the pandemic, I have realized that moving everything online has opened up some fantastic opportunities for all of us um, to engage with a far wider audience. So I just want to finish by reminding you um, that, or telling you that this year's Information for Better Markets Conference will be a series of lunchtime lectures from 13th to the 16th of December we'll be looking at um, accounting, sta accounting standards and what issues we can put in the too difficult box. We've got some international uh, names speaking, including Catherine Shipper and Mary Bath. So remember, it's free of charge. And in you know, this new online world, we'll all be online, um, please join us. So thank you very much to all of you again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you, Gillian, for, for, for the talk. Can I just ask uh, everyone else, please, we, my, mindful of time, we have to move on to the next, uh, to the next award. If you are, want to make any, any congratulations and comments, including Mike, please type in the chat box. That would help us to keep with the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. We now um, move on to the next, uh, the next award, which is the Outstanding Contribution Accounting and Finance Education Award, and I will invite uh, Professor Craig Stoner to join us, if I can use the spotlight. Craig is here, and obviously Professor Catriona as the recipient. Over to you, Craig. Hi. Um, it's my great pleasure to be introducing or saying a few words about the recipient of this year's Outstanding Contribution to Accounting and Finance Education Award, um, Katrina Paisi, who's, who I know very well, obviously, because she's not only do I know her through her educational writings, et cetera, she's also been a colleague for the last um, nine, 10 years. Um, and she's one of the most well-liked and well, the best mentors in, in, the, in our subject group. Um, so, not only, not only is, she, is her contribution to accounting e education evident by the things which are public knowledge, I guess, but also her contribution within the institution has been has been massive and very well appreciated. Um, I mean, people may or may not know Katrina's career, but I mean, she's 
she's been at several universities around Scotland, Aberdeen, um, RG, RGU, um, Glasgow Caledonian, Stirling, and then, then Glasgow University, or the Adam Smith Business School, as I'm meant to call it. Um, I have to get that plug in somewhere. Um, Katrina does uh, has done a lot of teaching over the years. So at the moment, she concentrates mainly on things to do with ethics and the accounting profession, as well as some of the some some advanced accounting theory kind of areas. Um, and these match pretty well with her research and her research areas. You know, fairly eclectic and kind of broad around around education as well as some other things. Um, but really cutting edge stuff on the issues like social mobility and the, the gender issues in, in the profession and to some extent within the academy. Um, she's worked really extensively with um, accounting bodies, particularly ICAS. Um, in, in, um, Katrina is a member of council and has been for a long time. I can't remember how many years. It probably is on my notes, which I'm trying not to look at. Um, and um, she's 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 worked a lot on on the ethics issues there and on whistleblowing and all these sorts of really topical kind of issues over the last few years. Um, and she's also done a lot of educational work and a lot of educational research, which spans not just the standard fare, if you like, of accounting academics, uh, teaching accounting at universities, but also looking at the looking at the, the school level, pre-university kind of education. In fact, even some work down at primary kind of level, um, talking about the how people how um, students or pupils, I'm not sure quite sure what you call them these days, at that level perceive accounting accountants. I was intrigued by some some research she was doing some years ago, where she got um, pupils to draw pictures of what accountants look like. And so very inventive in the way that she's done, done her research as well. And she's also done a, a great deal, because she's done an awful lot of work on uh, continuing professional development, which matches very well with the issues of the accounting profession, which is, is another area which is potentially, um, particularly in the CPD area, um, under-researched, I guess. Um, Katrina's got you know handfuls of uh, handfuls, a whole load of them um, published papers in many journals, some of the best journals around. Um, and you know this this will continue, I suspect, over the next few years. But um, I don't don't really want to say too much about Katrina because I I know we're running late, and but also I'd like to have Katrina have some time to, to speak if she wants to, but. Um, in terms of a contribution to accounting evidence, accounting education, a contribu Katrina's contribution has been, been clear and over a long period of time. Um, involved in the very early days of the, of the accounting education journal, um, lots of papers, the review paper of the first 10 years and things like this. I just can't, I can't overemphasize how, how much Katrina has, has contributed to our discipline not just within our journal, but also in the broader range of journals. Um, I think I'll probably cut this at uh, this point rather than read out more of the facts I've got here, which are not particularly interesting, I don't think. But Katrina, um, you know, you've, you've shown a massive um, um, commitment to not just the accounting profession in the academy, but also accounting education academy, but also within the profession. And your links with the profession are you know, second to none in, in ICAS terms, at least, I think. Um, and in that sense, you, you're doing kind of a role, which the opposite side of the role to that, which Gillian was awarded the prize for earlier. So um, it's my great pleasure, basically, to hand over to you and to say thank you for all your contributions to accounting education over the years. And um, well, thank, thank you very much. And I have absolute pleasure in, in presenting you as the award winner this year. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Greg. Um, those those very kind words um, mean a lot, and and actually perhaps even more so um, coming from from yourself, someone who I've known for more years than probably either of us really care to remember, um, and also you know laterally um, you know um, uh, 
colleague and and um, my current head of subject at the Adam Smith Business School, as, as you've said. So thank you very much, um, Greg, and, and also thank you to Baffer for this. Actually, like Gillian, when I first got the email, I did actually look twice because I thought well, this must be spam. So um, on a second reading, I realised that it, it did look pretty genuine. So um, thank you all very much. Um, I'm actually um, particularly delighted to receive this award because when you look at the um, criteria for it, it does talk about contributions over research, teaching and public service. And in a way, I think that's really what I see as being the role of the, the academic. You know, to, to me, um, as academics, um, we, we don't just concentrate on one thing. We, we, we try to sort of have a balanced portfolio across the piece. And, um, and so for me, my research, my teaching, and um, the other um, things that I do both within my um, institution and, and externally um, matter a lot to me. So, so um, you know, that, that's why I, I, I think this, this award is, is particularly appreciated. In terms of research, Sometimes I think accounting education can get a little bit of a bad press. Not, I would have to say, um, at BAFA. It's always been regarded um, very highly at BAFA, and it's also been regarded very, um, very, very well by um, the British Accounting Review. Um, but um, sometimes people worry um, about whether they should be involved in accounting education research. And I would say, well, absolutely not, because you have to do you know the research that interests you that um, and, and 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 follow your um your aspirations in that way and there are so many areas in which you can do accounting education research or indeed i should also say finance education research and um, from the micro issues in terms of how we teach individual things through to the much more macro issues about how we develop accounting professionals and um as you've said greg you know a lot of my research is educationally focused but a lot of it's also focused on the development of the accounting professional more generally whether that's ethical development career development and um, regulatory issues or, or those sorts of things so i think whatever somebody's interest they can find some way of, of um, fulfilling that within accounting or finance education research but i think teaching to me is absolutely central and you know um I think sometimes with you know all the focus on things like ref um it can be easy to forget about the teaching side but that's actually why we're here and that's why most of our institutions exist in the first place so i think teaching is absolutely fundamental um and a core activity that that we we really need to give equal um weight um to um in our work and i think we can all um remember inspirational um, teachers that we've had over over the years and I think that you know doing that kind of work is really important and at the risk of actually mentioning people I don't want to be one of these Oscar winners who gives a whole list of, of people but actually I did notice that um, the first ac um, accounting academic that I came into contact with um, is actually here um, and you know maybe it's because of her that I'm actually you know I've actually made my career in this and that was actually um, Professor Pauline Wheatman who really was a very inspirational teacher um, so you know you know, I think that it is really important that we give that 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 sort of emphasis to teaching as well as to research and also to all the other um, activities as well. So I would just like to say thank you very much to BAFA. I don't have this behind me. I have it um, here on my desk. So thank you very much for this award. I appreciate it greatly. And I would just like to thank everybody at BAFA for um, awarding it to me. So thank you, Greg, and thank you, BAFA. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you, Katarina. Great. Uh, we're going to move on to next, uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I've got uh, Alex Charles. Hi, Alex Tavine. Charles. Hi, yes, I'm just I'm making here. sure. Yeah. And of course, Helen. Fabulous. Thank you, Tavine. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's lovely to be with you here today. And even more important to be presenting this particular award. It's with enormous pleasure that I'm able to introduce Professor Elaine Harris for this Lifetime Achievement Award. I was thrilled when I was invited to introduce Elaine. I've had the pleasure of working for and with Elaine for many, many years. She is foremost my boss, and she will always be my boss as far as I'm concerned, but she has also mentored me during my career. She is someone I truly respect and I truly admire, and she is someone that I'm fortunate enough to be able to call my friend as well. In composing this introduction, I read Elaine's CV. It is very impressive, I might add. The introduction that will follow here will attempt to do justice to this CV and to Elaine's remarkable achievements. 
Elaine is the epitome of a balanced, influential, distinguished and respected academic. Her contributions to the discipline, her students, her colleagues and our wider community have been impactful and far reaching. Elaine started her career <coughs> in accountancy practice in 1976. I can only assume that she was a child genius at this point. McIntyre Hudson chartered accountants where she qualified as an accountant and reached a managerial position at a very early age. In 1990, she was awarded both her MBA from Kingston University and her Chartered Institute of Marketing Diploma. In 1997, she was awarded her Advanced Postgraduate Diploma in Management Consultancy from Henley Management College. And in 1999, her DBA from Brunel University. Her DBA research entitled An Insight into Strategic Investment Appraisal Project Risk Assessment, supervised by Roger Mills and examined by Clive Emanuel, has been the foundation of her research and the impact ever since. Since 1985, Elaine has taught a wide variety of accounting and business subjects, with a more recent focus on strategic management accounting, project management and research methodology. She has developed a framework for project risk assessment based on action research and is the author of the 2009 publication Strategic Project Risk Appraisal and Management. She also edited the Routledge Companion to, to Performance Management and Control published in 2018. Elaine has an impressive record of leadership and service in academia, including her research and innovation in strategic investment decision making. She is a strong, extremely capable and inspirational manager and leader who has created working environments that have nurtured and developed many colleagues, including myself, in three different universities. As head of school at the University of Northampton, Head of Department for Accounting and Finance and Head of Postgraduate Studies at De Montfort University and latterly as Director of the Business School at Roehampton University. She has led the Management Control Association for many, many years, introducing new alliances with colleagues in Europe, helping to develop and thrive. She has been instrumental in building links between the MCA and BAFA through the conference's management accounting stream. She chaired CDAF from 2005 to 2007 and is currently serving on the executive committee of CPAF, establishing the mentoring mentorship program in 2019. She is an associate editor of the British Accounting Review and has contributed to the development of the accountancy profession as a member of ACCA's research committee and SEMA's education board. She continues her contribution as the special issues managing editor of the Journal of Applied Accounting Research. Elaine has a strong record of research consultancy work and has created impact through the Strategic Investment Decisions Framework. Clients include Richard Burbage PLC, Peterborough Software PLC, Scania GB Limited, ABR Foods Limited, Bedfordshire County Council, Shoesmiths, FKI PLC, NHS London Hospitals and Europool Systems International BV, as well as professional bodies such as SEMA. Her work on risk assessment in project appraisal from, from 1999 to 2003 was funded by commercial enterprises such as Christian Salverson PLC. Her work on managerial judgment from 2004 to 2006 was funded by professional bodies such as SEMA. And her 2016 to 2018 work on the nexus of advanced performance measurement systems and strategic investment project appraisal was undertaken on behalf of the ICAW Charitable Trust. Her work on strategic investment decisions is still ongoing with case studies in higher education. Elaine is a fellow of the ACCA, the CIM, the CMI, the Royal Society of Arts and the HEA. Through this lifetime of achievement, Elaine has been an accountant and an academic who has been driven yet compassionate, who has nurtured, mentored and motivated. An academic dedicated to her discipline and determined to generate impact for academia and industry. She has been a trailblazer in working collaboratively with companies and recognising the power of true knowledge exchange. Moreover, Elaine has been and continues to be an inspirational and highly respected leader, academic and researcher, and one whom richly deserves this Lifetime Achievement Award. Elaine, Trevine, over to you.
Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <laughs> Thank you very much for your kind words. I'm very proud and delighted to receive this award from BAFA. I received the news um, that I was going to get the award on the same day that I'd shared my intention to retire this summer um, with the current director of Roehampton Business School. As you've said, Alex, the role that I went to Roehampton uh, to take on. I understand she's now in the process of recommending me for the title of Emeritus Professor um, so that I can continue in a sort of voluntary capacity. Um, and uh, so I'm happy to do that. Internal reorganisations um, is something that, that she's dealing with at the moment and something that I perhaps had too much experience of in other universities. There was one where I had four different job titles and four different department titles in a period of just eight years um, and only just avoided a fifth when I left. Having recently watched the, the National Theatre's latest production of um, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, I was reminded of the well-known lines about what's in a name. <laughs> a rose by any other would surely smell just as sweet. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I've remembered that correctly. Um, but in academia, names are important and changing them invokes all manner of debate, um, as is currently the case with our research centres at, at Roehampton. But uh, this debate often masks other more important underlying changes. Reflecting on my years of working as a middle manager, as I would call it, in accounting practice as well as in AG, I found a constant tension between management and leadership. Um, many of my present and former colleagues in HR and org studies have written on this difference. For me, the management role is usually a formal appointment whereby you're expected to implement an organisational strategy, manage and control activities and people within resource constraints, which in HE means you keep on having to deliver more and more each year with a shrinking budget. I can see Alex this morning, she's had to do this herself. <laughs> in contrast, leadership it can be bestowed upon you in many ways, including as part of a work code allocation, but it only actually works if you can inspire people, gain their trust and lead by example. So that's what I've tried to do. It's sometimes easier to do one or the other though, management or leadership, not always easy to do both at the same time. In the last five years or so, I've stuck largely to the leadership, and this might be why they've been the happiest years of my academic career. <laughs> I've enjoyed leading the PhD programme, as well as supervising my own PhD students, mentoring and developing new staff and PhD scholars, both in their teaching and their research. Possibly quite perversely, I've actually enjoyed the last 12 months <laughs> working from home, um, developing online materials, um, learning lots of new tools, um, digitising my old project management seminar activity that was based on a pack of playing cards which worked in the classroom but um, was quite challenging to digitise. Um, I've just done that. Each suit in the pack of cards is a different type of project and each card bears the title of a well-known project which if students haven't heard of it they can google it um, when they're online to discover more about it and then they apply the week's learning to that selected case. I expect I'll still hand over my old pack of playing cards to whoever takes over my teaching next year, hoping that the classroom teaching returns at some time. I've signed up to the concept of some voluntary work and for both Roehampton and Uston Business School, where I'm an honorary professor, um, especially research mentoring, PhD supervision, and um, continuing to lead the CPAF research mentoring scheme, which, um, as Alex has said, uh, I worked on and launched um, just every year ago. So for the time being, at least, uh, it is something that's very important to me. I've been very lucky to have some of the best mentors myself, not always formally, um, people normally that, whose arms I've twisted into to helping me at various stages of my career. And I think you're shortly um, going to hear from one of them, Jane Broadbent. Um, others from the Management Control Association, David Otley, who can't be with us today, um, Tony Barry, 
and obviously Clive Emmanuel, who's no longer with us. Um, all fantastic mentors to me. So I'm hoping to do what I can to, to help some of the uh, early career researchers in mentoring as well. So I'd like to just end by saying thank you to BAFA for recognizing um, the work that I've done, um, but not quite goodbye yet. Um, as I shift my work-life balance and focus more on finishing some of the papers I'm still co-authoring, um, as well as enjoying a bit more free time, especially once the travel restrictions are lifted. And uh, I will show you that I've got my award here. So thank you very much to BAFA for this. And indeed, as well as the plaque, uh, my husband has furnished me with this. So cheers and well done to all the other award, award winners today. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you for the speech and as well, Alexandra, for the introduction. Thank you very much for joining. Right. We will now move on to the, the final um, uh, the final award, um, the Distinguished Academic Award. So I will now invite uh, Professor Jane Brugman. Just to if she's here. Yes. Uh, as well, of course, Professor Gloria Aguiman, who's joining us from a friend from abroad if i'm not mistaken um trying to find the company again oh here we are here we go please go ahead uh Jean. okay um before um i start i want first of all to, to to say congratulations on the technology those of us that get as far as pilates and uh, and zoom wine tasting um are very impressed by this technology so thank you for that um i want also prior to uh praising gloria to the rooftop um i i want to say what a privilege it is to um not only present her uh, but also to be involved in a presentation of four awards um, to women, um, and and uh, and this is this is absolutely superb. And I think that at the end of this, you will all of you understand what a rounded contribution these women have made to our discipline. So this is this is um, just an amazing privilege. Um, and in introducing Professor Gloria Adjumang, I am not only privileged, but I'm quite emotional because I'm aware that were Geoffrey Uniman still with us, it will be Geoffrey that was actually giving this award because Geoffrey and Gloria have worked together so closely and supported each other. Um, so it, it's, it's, um, it, it's a bittersweet um, presentation is this one. Um, it's, it's difficult to know how to encapsulate Gloria's life and achievements um, in the short time available. And you can understand an awful lot about Gloria um, if you recognise that she's currently in Ghana visiting her mother who's not been too well. And we wish, we, we wish our mother all the best as well as Gloria. But the point is that if you ask Gloria, as I did, well, can you tell me something about your early career? All she does is tell you about other people. She says nothing about herself. And she starts immediately with her mother and father um, who supported her for the begin from the beginning. And her father in particular, who was determined that his daughters were as well educated as his sons. Um, and given the chance to succeed. And one of the things that I took from my discussion with Gloria about what I might say is that so much of what she's done, um, some of which is clearly bonkers, like being head of department and things like that, to, you know, um, she, she said, well, I wanted to do it because I want to prove that black women can. Now that is, absolutely fundamental, uh, not just to, to us here, but to society more generally. And we should, we should treasure and celebrate Gloria because she certainly has proved that. It's clear to me that Gloria has always been recognized for her intellect. She tells a story of um, the, the, the family traveled the world and she, she was actually um, at school in England 
um, and was going back to Ghana and the school said, could she please stay and finish her education? Um, because she was such a superstar, even at those early days. Um, anyway, she went back to Ghana and when she got there, she went through her education and was top of her class, the University of Ghana. Well, where else would she be? Um, on leaving university, I, I, I'm, I'm really simplifying um, what Gloria did because she did so much, we could be here all day. But she, um, she went to work with Coopers and Lybrand, which she said was a rude shock. Uh, but she learned to add without a calculator. She earned ever such a lot about uh, stock taking. Um, and she learned that the job as an auditor was not for her. In her words, she said it was not stimulating. Anyway, following a degree, uh, sorry, a period of teaching at her university in Ghana, which is what she went on to do, she left and went to Canada to do a, a degree at McGill University. And of course, when she was there, she got the Dean's Award. Um, so again, showing us what, what a, an absolute intellect this, this woman has. Life was complex and she'd lived in, in various locations before eventually returning to the UK with Augustus, her husband, and her children, Emma and Freddie. Um, just to show the character of this woman, when she got here, she first of all worked briefly as a cleaner. Um, she said she earned enough to pay for Freddie's um, um, uh, play, uh, nursery education at that stage. Um, but, and I, I want to tell you that because this shows that this is a woman who actually knows what it's like to work hard, to, to actually strive, to give what you can to your family. And, and that I think is, is, is really um, just so significant. She also then went on to, um, to give to the universities, to, the, to what the academic career. She moved on pretty quickly to an academic career. But uh, Gloria Adjamang isn't an academic prima donna. She's a giver. She's given all the time she's been in her career. When you ask her how her career developed in the UK, again, trying to find anything about what she did is difficult. She'll tell you that her first academic job in the UK was at Ealing College, now Thames Valley University. And she tells the support of, 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 of Nick Pratt, who she calls a talent spotter. And actually, when you look at who was there, um, and I, I mentioned a few names, and I, I don't know whether I missed anybody, but Gloria, Jeffrey Uniman, Pat Susha, Christine Cooper, Jane Davison, Pauline Gleedle, uh, Car Carol Adams. I mean, this is the sort of nursery and, and background um, that was created um, in, in that atmosphere. And actually, it shows how important the whole of the university sector is in terms of, of, of developing academics. It's not just the elite institutions. Um, and and, and, and so, so there they got to know each other. Um, and it was here that Gloria and Jeffrey first met and taught each other all they knew about teaching accounting students. And they encouraged each other to do PhD studies. It was at that stage that I was fortunate enough to enroll Gloria at Royal Holloway and supervise her doctoral studies. It wasn't too onerous. Um, she, she taught me a lot. She was also a model student who never missed deadlines. And eventually when a post came along, um, she was appointed to Royal Holloway. Um, she was a worthy candidate. She got the job and Royal Holloway got a very good deal indeed. So what, what does Gloria do? Um, well, she has a range of interests and I, I took this from her website um, so that I got it right. Um, and she, she talks about NGO accountability and performance management issues, management control in public sector organizations, 
funding issues in public sector organisations, the management of educational institutions, culture and control issues, and accounting in less developed and emergency, uh, sorry, emerging economies. Um, and she's worked in all those areas. She's consistently published in the top journals in our field. Trying to pull all that together is actually quite easy because what she does is she deals in issues that matter and she applies her intellect and her intellectual approach to exploring and teasing out elements of those issues that matter. She's a qualitative researcher because she sees that this is the way to get to the essence of the themes she wishes to understand. The point is she cares and because she cares her research matters and if you haven't read it go and look at it no matter what you think your field is and what your interests are this is a woman whose work is worth reading to be honest if all that gloria had achieved was a portfolio of distinguished research that would be sufficient to justify her her award but she's done so much more she supported her PhD students and she's helped them to publish. She's cared for her undergraduate students and as head of department and now head of business and management at Royal Holloway, she's ensured that student interests are foremost and not neglected. She's con contributed enormously to the wider academic infrastructure. She's been involved with the the uh, Committee of Heads of Accounting, she's been a BAFA trustee, she's on the Council of the Chartered Association of Business Schools, and so much more. I, I, I could go on and, and, and I, could, I could list lots and lots of things. I've missed so much in this brief introduction, but one thing I can be clear about Gloria has surely provided a proud role model that shows that black women can. It also shows, also shows that everyone can, but it's important to note black women can. She will continue demonstrating this and she will surely encourage others to follow her example. And if we all followed her example, we'd be doing something very, very right indeed. Congratulations, Gloria. Thank you very much, Jane. Uh, you brought tears to my eyes, especially, mine. <laughs> especially mentioning uh, Jeffrey. Each time I hear Jeffrey's name, tears come into my eyes. And so I was very happy to hear Richard Jackson also mentioning Jeffrey. And um, of course, this, this award is dedicated to, to Jeffrey, who were good friends and uh, colleagues over several, several years. Uh, you, you, you've done, you've, you've praised me to the hills like you said you would. Uh, I'm not sure I deserve it. I remember attending uh, several BAFA conferences. Uh, the first one I attended was in 1996 and uh, we presented a paper with Jeffrey. Who else? It was a quantitative paper and naturally we we failed abysmally. We did not understand the mathematics and the statistics that were involved in it. But from 1996, continued to attend BAFA year upon year upon year. And, and that experience of quantitative research uh, proved to me that I was a qualitative uh, uh, researcher. And as, as, as you've said, I think it's so important to research things things that matter, things that uh, can change the world, things that are big, things that can help society. Um, and my encouragement to uh, the young early career people is look for the accounting in anything that you're interested in, anything that is real that you are interested in, because there is accounting in most things. I mean, recently, I've done a piece of work on the Windrush 
the room rush generation and the room rush um, uh, uh, issues that arose a couple of years ago with, with the home office. And you'd be surprised at the amount of, of um, accounting that there is within the ring rush story. Similarly, I've done a piece of research on migration and the, and the, um, and the migrants on the uh, crossing uh, the Mediterranean Ocean and the problems that they face. And there is accounting in that. And I think it's, it's so important to, to look for accounting as accountability, as something that can be used for, as a force for, for good. Um, one of the conferences I went to in, um, in the mid 1990s, uh, at that time I was very much interested in, in the management of the education. And I was erroneously told that accounting and education don't, don't agree, don't match, there's nothing. Leave the accounting and education and look for something else. Well, the good thing was I continued to account in education. Look at Trina, I'm really proud that, that you, you, your account in education uh, uh, um, profile uh, is, is, is so amazing uh, because it is important. We are, we are educators, no matter what we study. It's important for us to, to encourage and inspire our students and to help them to, to aim for, uh, for, for, for good things that will help uh, society. So yes, Jane, you've, you've really, you've really uh, sold me to the accounting, uh, accounting academy. Uh, as with the other ladies, when I heard about the award, I said, me? Why me? To me, to me, they are great accounting uh, professors. Quite a, quite a few of you might want to show up from Royal Holloway's perspective. As we, uh, Jane Broadbent was at Royal Holloway, Jeffrey Uniman, a house at Royal Holloway, uh, Chris Napier, Chris Nobes, uh, all of them have achieved that, uh, this award, Distinguished Academic Award. So I wondered, how can I be walking in their footsteps? But all of them have been amazing mentors. And I think as senior academics, that's a role we shouldn't take lightly. We need to inspire our students. We need to encourage our, our colleagues. There is no shortcut. It's all about work. And then I think the final word goes to um, Lee Parker, who, who told me almost 20 years ago, never give up, never give up, never give up. And I think that's what I'd like to leave with the Academy. So thank you, Bafa. Thank you for this award. Greetings from Ghana. The temperature is 34 degrees and it's quite hot and breezy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Gloria. Thank you very much, Jane. I, I wish I was there. Uh, in, in many ways, it's not even 10, I think, here at the moment. Um, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for wonderful speeches. Um, I, I'm, apologies, we're 10 minutes late, but I think it, 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 to some extent, I think it was worth, worth it, much worth it, but 10 minutes late. So uh, I, will, I will take with a very couple of points and then we will, we will close and have a break at that point. But I just want to say, I think the key words around, around our today's colleagues, uh, who are recognized, you know, all of them, uh, great, great colleagues, great teachers, academics and researching for what matters. I think that's, that's I think, something that we, you know, whether it's education, whether it's accounting education, whether it's, it's research, it's about what matters. And, and I think that's been recognized today. So I will very, very, uh, uh, very pleased uh, for all the four awardees. Um, one, Two more points and I'll, and I'll be done, I promise. Uh, number one is uh, thank you again for attending and, and, and to be there, but also to bring the idea that please consider nominating for the next one, for the next two 2021. So there will be the nomination forms will be out soon and until the end, by the end of the year, there will be a deadline. So I'll encourage all members to put forward colleagues such as those who have been awarded today for their, for their, for their contributions and efforts. I think that's quite important. Uh, and to give as an example and to really lead the way in terms of our next generation of academics. Uh, so I, I really would, would encourage you to do that. Uh, uh, to conclude, therefore, we, we have a talk at, at four o'clock. So I really would uh, ask all of you to, if you could just take a break and but come back at 4 p.m. The Zoom link is different, obviously. Uh, is, is, I'm not sure if the Zoom is the same or not, but please, please check online. 
and, uh, and, and, and check for the talk at 4 p.m. Uh, if you do want to just uh, uh, mill around and have a chat with people, please try a wonder me. I think everyone's been quite, quite uh, uh, complimentary of the cafeteria. So what we call the cafeteria on the platform, but that cafeteria takes you to another page called wonder me. And that's a way to really uh, connect and, and, and have a cup of coffee, uh, well, virtually uh, as well. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you all to, to all the introducers and all the, uh, the awardees. And I thank you for, for your attention. Uh, we will now be, be switching off. Thank you very much. Thank you.